You want to play some cards? Play some poker? I'll even show you what I got. It's an ace and a king. I guess now if you got an ace jack, you can throw your hand away. It's an easy way to play. If you got nines, do you want to gamble? As a favorite, you would be. And I say that because if you are trading on the equity market, put a stop loss in, limit buy, limit sell, limit short, limit cover order in, you're exposing your cards. I kind of wonder if uh, the big players, you know, Goldman Sachs, you know, these kind of people, if they are able to make money off of this because they see millions of orders. They can put a bunch of different fancy code in a computer and figure out probability odds very well. And geez, they profited every day in the first quarter. See, to gamble, you need to profit to have some sort of edge. In poker, people aren't going to show you their cards by doing this. They'll show you the, your, their cards by the way they act, their mannerisms. Are they nervous? Are they acting over aggressive? Are they smiling happy? You get those mannerisms, you can win. So they're showing their cards. After all, limit orders and stop losses can be a great thing. And in fact, some people have saved a lot of money because they have stop loss orders. And limit orders can be very profitable too. For example, the Dow 9400 area is an, an area I expect massive support or an area where buyers should be coming in. And at that area, say SPY 100, you put a limit order in, it could be profitable. And then when you get that order in, you put a stop loss at say 96, find the Fibonacci for the sell, which would be 61.8% of 22 on top of 100, or 38.1% of it. And then you can profit. But once again, the old whole ordeal is you got to be smart enough to win at any of these games. Say there's a big football game between the Packers and the Raiders in Green Bay. Raiders are a terrible team. Most people know that. And say the Packers only favored by six and a half. Everyone's like, why? I'm going to play the Packers in a heartbeat. And well over three quarters to four fifths of the money, if not six sevenths of it, will be going to the Packers. And yet, if you look through the week, you might notice that the line doesn't change. They know something. You, you might not know what they know, but do you think that these people working behind the scenes making the lines know what's going on? Yeah. And at that point, to be on the right side, you'd want to bet the Raiders. And you probably have a good 70-80% success rate in that particular spot. Therefore, if you want to win in stocks and you play the game, you got to do what the big money does. Buy low and sell high. Buy when they buy, sell when they sell. Because generally speaking, markets go way high, go to the upside, and everyone's talking euphoric thoughts, and it's time to go long on stocks. And well, that's when they trap you. And then you have a day where the market's down 3% and you're scared a little, but it's only a day. Now it's down 5.5% for the week. It's down 12% for the month. And now the quarter's done, it's down 20%. It goes down so much, you're like, man, it sucks, I gotta sell. Yet they're buying. But the, the thing is, is I got to believe that they know when significant tops and bottoms are going to come in well in advance. Because you could say, well, 
in November of 08, when the Dow trickled down to 75, 7600, it's a time to buy. Yet it retraced another 18% to the downside after that. See, so you, you're in a game where there's no such thing as up or down too much. So it helps to know where things are going to go. And since Goldman Sachs profited every single day in the first quarter, 60 plus profitable days, they must know something. Question is, how illegal is it? How moral and ethical was their actions? Just like if you play a short on BP, is that ethical to profit on inside information because inside of the ocean oil spewing out and the, the stock's getting hammered? I'm not going to make that call, but that's what gambling is all about. Bye-bye.